what really goes on and how to even think about this. Okay, now product management, this role is specifically in tech industry. You'll find this majorly in the tech space. Um, you'll find this, otherwise you'll find this in banking also, but that is also in their IT, you know, like IT departments. So bank has their own financial services, but they also have IT department, right? So their software part of it. You'll find this role. So basically, majorly in tech, this is that's where the major concentration is. But anywhere outside of like core tech industry, if you go, let's say in healthcare, um, they, the hospitals like they offer, they have their software products, right? So whoever's building those products will also have a product manager role. If you go to consumer goods, they they will also have a product manager role, but it will be again slightly different because their core product is consumer good and not a software. So the first place or the you know most concentrated place to look for is with whatever company has a software product. Okay. Now, when I talk about software product. On the parallel, I want you guys to think of like a business, right? When, if if you want to open up, I'm gonna, this is again, this is this is me trying to draw a comparison in very, very simple terms. Um, when you guys, um, if you think of a business, right? To, tomorrow, you wanna go start a business and you think, okay, I'm gonna launch um, sneakers. Let's take example sneakers, right? So I'm going to launch new sneakers on my name. I want to put my name. What are you going to do? You're going to you're going to actually go source it somewhere. You're going to need to produce it. You need to design it. You need to have marketing around it. Think of all of the functions that are required for a product to come live in a market, right? You as a business owner, you want to bring out a product in the market. Think of all the functions that are required to make that happen. You can do, you know, when you're starting out, of course, you do it as a solopreneur and, you know, you have small team. But as you grow, your marketing grows, you probably have designers, you have people who are sourcing it. So same thing happens in a software company. You're building a software product and then to build that product, Back in the day when I was getting started and I started my career back in 2011 and I've been a product manager for almost eight years now, majorly in uh, FinTech and health, health tech space. Back in the day, it was a lot more engineering driven, meaning when the companies wanted to build a software, it was more engineering driven. Engineers would just, they of course write the code, but they also decide what, what are we going to build? But now as this role has more evolved and software development cycle has a lot more evolved, it's the companies are becoming a lot more product led. You'll see this terminology here and there on internet, on blogs or whatever, but it's, it's becoming a lot more product led, which means um, a lot more acceptance of the product manager role and a lot more, I wanna say, it's a lot more re respected role, I wanna say, also. So what does a product manager really do? When the company, when somebody decides they want to build a product, a software, there are different functions. Engineers are going to write the code, designers are going to design the product, but product managers come in the picture because they are going to direct their engineering teams and designers what to build. Product managers focus is to think about the customer problem. You know, when you're building a product, I, I'll go back to my sneaker example, right? A product manager will define, um, you know, okay, sure, you know, if somebody said we wanna build a sneaker, sure, we're gonna build a sneaker, but let's talk about what kind of sneaker. And what kind of comfort are we offering in the sneaker to the user, right? What's really the design? Is it, you know, high ankle? Is it flat? What kind of sole it's going to have? Things like that. So that's what a product manager also does 
in a software, they think about their hat on, the, you know, their hat on is from the user. You know, we're building this app. Uh, what problem is this app going to solve, right? Let's say if you want to build a productivity app, notes app or something, right? There's a bunch of notes apps in the market. Yeah, How definitely. Do... Right, so, sorry? No, no, I was like, you know, there are so many apps, so. Exactly, exactly. So the product manager's job is with the solution that is already out in the market, how do you differentiate? How do you, how do I, how do I as a product manager still solve the problem for my customer? And, and on, while I'm solving the problem for my customer, eventually as you grow in your career, you're going to also be thinking about um, the business, right? You're going to solve the problem for the customer, but you have a business to survive. So business has to make money. So startups are no different. Startups are just no different. In the initial years, yes, the focus is not like a traditional business about profits or money, but it's a lot more acquisition, which we'll get into later. But point being, product manager's job is to not write the code, not design it, although they work with the engineers and designers, so it's good to have that knowledge, but their job is to put on their hat for problem solving and really think about the customers and the problem they're solving for the customer. I hope this this helps. I um, I tried to. Yes. <laughs> this was so, so clear. I mean, you know, it feels like product management is not the CEO itself, but, you know, someone acting the same as the CEO of the company, thinking everything, managing everything, coordinating, and, you know, all that stuff. I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that point up, and more because, yes, some definitions, some product de descriptions you'll see, oh, we're looking for the CEO, or you're going to act as a mini CEO. So, yes, while that sounds, you know, a lot of, like, exciting work, keep in mind that CEO is somebody who is a lot more knowledgeable, and they have the responsibility and authority, Okay. Product manager is a title from the title, it says manager, but for the initial years of your career, you're not gonna have a team to manage. You have your scrum team or your engineering team, you know, designers, you're gonna work with them. You still call them your team, but they're not directly reporting to you. So that's a key description. You know, it says product manager, you know, that's the title that we've been going with but it's not really like a manager manager role it's more of a you manage the product not the people that's that's another way to think about it exactly so without yeah. authority you lead them on so yes without without really you know having uh you know hey here's your you report to me you do the work no it's not that it doesn't work like that it's more of that's why I think in a lot of my videos, I do talk about building that influence, you know, like being able to influence, you don't have authority, but you have to influence people to do the work. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I've, I've watched that video, you know, having the skill to, you know. Yeah. All right, Nazo. So uh, you told us about, you know, you had 80, uh, you started in 2011. So. Just tell, you know, just if you could tell us about your journey until now as a product management, how have you worked? How have you, you know, overcome all these problems? You know, as you said, you don't have the actual authority, but you have to make people work somehow. So can you tell us about, you know, how did you begin and all that journey up till now as a product manager? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I started out my career actually as a business analyst. I did not start out as a product manager. I actually didn't know nothing about product management. I, I have a bag, my background is more in business. So I did my undergrad in business administration. And then I, um, in my fourth year of college, in my undergrad, I started working as a business analyst in a tech company. And that's where pretty much just writing requirements uh, working with my design team, you know, they would design up something, the screens, 
mock-ups, you know, how, how a screen is going to look like. And I would just write the requirements. That was basically my job. But then I worked very closely with the product manager and she actually inspired me and inspired me a lot. And that's how I even got the idea of, uh, you know, maybe product management was something I wanted to explore. And so I started out with, so after my first business analyst job, I uh, started with JP Morgan and I started with them also as a business analyst. And then from there I moved, you know, into, I was promoted into product management. Um, and since then I've worked on several different product, uh, product roles, but mostly in FinTech space, like, um, different B2B product, B2C products that banks have. Um, yeah. And that's majorly, that's where I am. I've worked for very, very large companies with, uh, thousands of employees. And I have worked for very, very small companies with like 40 employees. So I have, um, you know, worked in startup and in a large company both. Like a variety of experience from you know small to that that's great. Uh, taking from your point that you began as a you know analyst, uh, could you like tell us that you know is product management actually a role for freshers or you know if it is then what is the skill sets and you know what we can go on to that part and if it's not then if you could tell us like business management business analyst was one. What else could we do to start and end up as a product manager? So. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a good question. So here's a, here's a slightly challenging part. Um, so I mentioned, right, I started as a business analyst and I started working after my undergrad. And while I was working full time, I actually did my master's weekends and evenings, actually. So and my master's is in engineering management. So that brings me to my point of for the students, for somebody who is just right out of college, product management is a little bit more mid-level role with exception if you are from a CS background, computer science background. And if there are companies within India that have product management program, APM program, some companies hire uh, like you from the university, there are university placements, placements, and they hire right through that into their APM program. It's called associate product manager, but they have pre program, which is more like a, uh, rotation program for six months. They'll have you work on every six months for two years. So like four different rotations, they'll have you work on a few different products. And so at least here in the US, we have that. I'm not sure in India if you guys have that companies have that program uh, with direct university placements. So that would be one. But if, if not that, I, you know, it's um, for a business degree, business background directly to go into product. I've seen it, it becomes a little bit challenging with what companies are looking for versus the skills that you build in your business degree. Uh, but CS background students can actually get into product uh, even after school. Look for APM role, okay? Associate product manager, you'll find that role. Now, if not product management, then the other few starter roles are business analyst, data analyst. So data is a great background to have that will lead you to product management also in like a couple of years. If you can be a data analyst, do some analysis and data analysis doesn't require a whole lot of, it's not a very, again, it's not a very technical role, but you do require some minimal um, uh, sense of SQL and some very basic. Yeah, Excel and all that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And then, and so it's not too complicated, but data analysis is a good one. And then um, there's another one, uh, product ops. I have seen this role actually say somebody on my uh, IG actually, they told me in India, they're in product ops. Product ops, product operations basically, is a role that is um, organizationally, it's it, part of the product team, but product ops person helps you, um, helps the team basically 
do a lot of the you know um, operations type work you know they'll help coordinate with the customers you know they'll set up um, interview sessions they'll set up the softwares you know like if you're setting like the software you we use is like Jira Confluence within tech industry you know these are very common ones so they'll help basically anything they'll support the product manager with uh, operation operationally like process wise so process is basically um, that's what uh, a product ops person will do the other one is a process analyst i'm not sure um again this, these are the roles we have here at least in silicon valley so um you, you'll have to look them up um in in for in in in, in india and then the, another one is management consulting although management consulting is slightly um it's more like a little bit indirect role but if you do get in management consulting, that is also a path to product management. Okay, so these, the ones that I talked about up to now, these are more like direct path to product. Now, I have also seen people work as a product designer for a couple of years, then transition to product. People work as an engineer, like core, hardcore engineer, write code, and then transition into product manager. Uh, so, options are really you know endless it's all about how you you know craft your story product manage the, the good part about product management is in fact there is no set path you can really be an engineer writing code daily and then you transition into product management and then companies will still love you for it because you understand code and you have the technical you know knowledge and if you come from a business background, you'll still be loved because you understand the business side of things. Product manager, no one product manager is same, same skill set. Like there, it's just so wide and it's all about how you craft your story, the skills you bring to the table. If you're good in data, you become a data product manager. You know, companies, there will be companies who will love you for it. If you have design sense, then you're, you're going to be closely working on, um, you can you can go to like B2C type products where there are design aspects, and then you'll be valued there too. So there's a few paths to go about this, but to the ones that directly lead into product, business analyst, data analyst, uh, product ops, um which one which are the ones APM. APM process APM. Yes. associate product manager which is a direct path to product yes and this is so great I mean uh, you know the best thing was that you know all these I mean you know the audience that we are seeing here these are all you know like majority of them are from CS background they are you know doing their BTECs and computer science and maybe they'll opt for SD, so SD mm -hmm. positions, you know. And that's so great to hear that even after doing SD, you can, you know, climb up the stairs and become a product manager. So, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it, actually, if you, so the main thing, right? So what we do as SDE, we're writing code, right? The engineers are writing code. But what's more important is the thinking pattern that you build, that muscle, right? The logical thinking, the critical thinking that you're gonna build along the way, that is going to help, help you really in your product management role. So those, as students, I wish somebody had told me at the time, like these are the skills that you need to be building on, you know? When you think of a problem, when somebody is, is, is telling you, hey, we're gonna go build this, ask questions you know build that critical thinking ask deeper question if they answer you something ask more ask more keep going down and keep asking questions and that's how you will build your critical thinking and so cs background is great for product management you talked about critical thinking and problem solving so i guess yep. these two are the main skills that we want what else do you know if See, I'm already inspired by you, Nazuk. I already want to be a product manager. 
I already told you, right? But yeah. what about others? Which skills do we, you know, actually want to learn or we should work on from now itself so that after two years or three years, after we graduate, we can, you know, uh, do good in product management role. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Can you tell, a bit, so, tell us? Here's a, here's a few things. First, number one thing is I want you guys to focus on soft skills. Okay, what, what I mean by soft skills is number one is communication. Be good, start to build the good communication from very early on. If you guys can, and communication is like four different parts, right? You have your written communication, verbal communication, uh, you uh, we, we write documentation. So as a product manager, you know, you, you're gonna do a lot of presentations. You're gonna write a lot of documents, so written, verbal, and then um, both of them, try to get as good as you can in your communication. Be very, very concise. So one thing I'll give you, one quick tip I'll give you around this is if you're writing something, if you're writing an email, let's say, and you write a big paragraph, proofread it twice, not just once, twice. Um, why? strip out the words like if you can reword it and take us you know a few sentences out of the word and it still makes the same sense then just take it out and so the more you practice this the more you the better you're gonna get so improve your written and verbal both you know be part of debates as much as you can you know um that's just gonna help you guys build your verbal and with debate what one thing I think I heard this, um, uh, this is a tip from one of my, you know, uh, one of the product leaders that I look up to. So her name's Jackie Bavaro. So her, her tip was, we underestimate the power of debates, but debates actually lead you to not only build your verbal communication, but they actually lead you to build your critical thinking also. Why? Because when debate is back and forth, right? When, when we say a point, it's not just we going up there, giving a speech and going out. It's actually, we say a point, the other person counters it and puts their own point, right? So it's a back and forth. We're thinking about how we're gonna answer and what the person is saying. It's a back and forth. This debates actually help you so much build your critical thinking and deep, you know, like when you counter somebody, so pick a friend, pick a colleague, you know, your, your peers and have debate sessions. It's going to really help you guys build your communication. So that's number one. Number two in the soft skills is um, what we like as a product manager, what you're expected to do is build influence. Can you logically bring your point out, not just saying, hey, this is a great movie, you guys need to watch it, not that kind of influence. Sure, that's also nice, but more like logically bring your point out of why something needs to happen. Can you convince your peers? And that convincing in a logical way, that's called building influence. And third is the leadership. In college, I think for you guys to crack into the, the product management role, um, companies will really look for leadership skills. So make sure if you can lead, you know, either a group, I think Anmol, you're already doing a great job leading your chapter. And so building that skill. So whatever you guys can do to bring the leadership skill, build on that, I think that's gonna really help. You know, thank you so much. These are, I mean, I've been searching for like one month, like which skills someone says about tech, someone wants, someone says about this and that, and you know, it's all fuzz over the Google, you know, Google platform. Yeah. So these are the things. So problem solving, we have critical thinking, and then we have soft skills. And then, you know, the leadership influence and everything. Yeah. 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 So what, so the way to understand, right? Uh, these are the skills, the soft skills and, you know, the critical thinking and problem solving. These are the skills that are directly, directly impacts your day-to-day -day work as a product manager, 
right? What you're going to do, what your deliverable is, your value is as a product manager. Uh, when you go on Google, of course, you'll see, you know, the tech skills or design skills. Let's, let's take a minute and let, let's, let me, I guess, bust some myths there. <laughs> Um, so why they talk about the design and the technical knowledge as a product manager, when you're building products, you work with engineers and designers on day to day basis. So although you don't need to be an engineer yourself, if you are an engineer, great, you already understand them. But if you're not an engineer, you don't want to be an engineer. That is also fine. That is not a problem but you're gonna work with them and it helps to understand what they're talking about, right? If, if an engineer is talking about APIs, of course, as a product manager, I may not know how to build an API, but I need to know what an API is. For example, I'm just throwing out a jargon, you know, to kind of give you guys a little bit of when they talk technical, you don't need to know everything of how they do their job, how they write the code, you know, how engineers are writing code, what they're doing on the back end. You don't need to know all that in depth, but you have to still understand a little bit. You're writing the problem, you know, what problem needs to be solved as a product manager. Engineers are writing about how to solve it. So as a product manager, it helps to know what are the engineers doing? Like on a very, very high level, kind of be able to speak their language a little bit, if you will. That's that's basically the idea behind. So, I mean, you guys are still in college. You have a couple of years to still graduate. Keep building on the soft skills. Those are, if you've already built those, by the time you graduate and you've really hone, honed in those uh, skills, that's an awesome start. But on the side, if you can take some very beginner level, you know, tech courses, design course, just to understand how, what's the design thinking, um, I think those also help your profile. Definitely. Um, uh, we have just one question left, guys, from Nazuk. And after that, we'll, you know, move on to the Q&A session. They have so many questions, so yeah. So my getting straight to the last point, uh, last question. I mean, Nazuk, I've, I've seen your LinkedIn profile. I've been seeing your videos all over the LinkedIn. And I've seen that you've worked with so many startups and even large companies, you know? So you've got the mix, kind of the right mix to for a product management. So I would request you to, you know, tell us about the work uh, that differs in these both environments. And also, uh, what skill sets differ if they do in case, uh, you know, in both of these environments. So that's that's a great question, Anmol. Because see, these days, you know, we hear all this buzz about, you know, you want to work for a startup. You know, here people will come and pitch you. You know, oh, we have a great startup, and you know, come join our startup. Um, let's let's talk about the key differences. Here's, here's my suggestion. As a new product manager, I highly, highly, highly suggest people to go for a larger company and not go just into startups just yet. Why I say that is because in startups, you're gonna be by yourself. Meaning there is no you know, like a mentorship, if you will, for the product managers, you're just required to, you're assigned a task, something has to be done, you go get it done. And that's it. There's, you don't learn like the best practices, the principles, you don't build your foundation of product management in a startup. You build a foundation of product management in a large company where there are other product managers, veteran product managers you can learn from, or the company has set a department or a process in place that you learn from. And so in a large company, the skills that you really need will revolve around good, good communication. You know, you have to, because there's a lot of people, you have to make sure you're effective in your communication. So that's, that's number one. Then in a large company, 
they might move slightly slower. Of course, the startups, you know, a few people, 40 people, you know, they're going to make a break quickly, you know, build things, break things fast. And that's basically the culture in startups. Large companies take a little bit longer because they have an established product. And there are several things to be thinking about, several teams to be coordinating with. So the scale of, you know, working in a large company, think about, you know, you're a product manager and you're working cross-functionally with at least, I want to say, um, about, a, I don't know, 50, 60 people on a regular basis. Like in a large company, like, you know, you'll have your 10 or 10, 15 people on your day-to-day -day basis. And then cross-functionally, you have your marketing department, you have your communications team. If you go in banking, you'll have legal and risk departments that you coordinate with um, different kind of product, right? So a lot of coordination, be on top of, you know, the skills required, right? Be on top of what you're saying you're going to do, do that, deliver, build trust. You have to build a trust with your team. Startups, on the other hand, it's simply, you know, you will have access to the founder himself, the CEO himself, and he'll probably be talking with you and, and you know, your the small team gets together, brainstorms it, gets it done. That's sort of the culture, and it's all about, go, you know, just getting it done quickly. So um, if, it, if I were to do it all over again, you know, I did start out my career in a large company, and now when I look back, you know, after eight years, um, eight, eight years I've been a product manager, but overall I've been working for almost 10 years in, in tech. So if I were to do all over again, I would still choose a larger company. Uh, only because I know when I worked in a large company, it builds my foundation. I had other product managers to run my ideas off of, you know, hey, you know what, hey, Jake, you know, I'm not understanding this. Can you help me understand it? You know, you have somebody to reach out to. In a startup, you can reach out to the founder or the CEO, you know, hey, I'm, I need help with this. But then he also has limited time. It's just how the structure is. In startups, people are not going to have a whole lot of time to uh, invest in your learning. You're on your own to learn. So that's, that's you know, kind of the differences there. And I think uh, if we join startups, uh, we are bound to make errors and we might even adapt some habits that might not be good for a longer run, I guess. I mean... It, absolutely. Absolutely. You might, you know... You, I mean, because there's there's no guidance, right? So when you join a startup, within your company, you may not have product management guidance. So you're on your own to kind of go outside and seek that guidance, right? So you'll have to, maybe you join some mentorship groups or, you know, like communities to kind of gain that knowledge. So you'll be on your own to bring that from outside. So then then it's up to you to, you know, how, how much effort, time, you know, you can put in uh, and then still be doing, you know, good good job, I guess, as a product manager. Definitely. Um, so, yeah, I guess that is it from my side, Nazuk. Like, uh, these were the questions that I had in my mind troubling yeah. since a few days. Uh, now I would request the audience to, you know, ask whatever questions they have. And we have, like, five, ten minutes for that. I, I see a couple of questions already um that we can take this one does it for uh pay more to be an apm or sd1 in any company um so this is something i think you guys will have to do a research for india specifically i can tell you here in silicon valley um and so here's the thing not just silicon valley within us also it differs so much like if I'm in Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley and New York are the highest paid areas just because of cost of living. Uh, then comes Seattle, then comes Austin in the US. So even within US, we have a lot of disparity in the pay only because of cost of living. So I think I want to say this is something you should uh, probably Google for, for India. And I don't want to give you guys wrong numbers. But here in US, I want to say they're at par. They're almost the same. Product manager APM and SD1, they're almost the same ballpark numbers. 
Right. Starting salaries here in the U.S. for APM role is something like um, 100, 120K, something like that. About 100, 120K. I don't, I don't know how that will translate, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, any other questions, guys? Or A lot of you guys have a question about package. <laughs> in India, sorry. <laughs> I think uh, many, uh, like, we were just brainstorming with our group itself. And, you know, like, 30% people, uh, you know, told me that, uh, I mean, they were not t telling this on the group, but in the DMs, they were like, you know, bhai, I, I joined this uh, CS background for, you know, this package thing. And, you know, the, there's this... Uh, there's this excitement about the packages and being into engineering, especially in India. So I guess uh, that is the paradigm of Indian. Yeah, no, it's nothing wrong. Why not? You know, of course, we all want good things in life. And that is something actually, you know, you bring up a really good point. Um, I'm going to let you in on a little bit of a backstory around this. Okay. So... I come from a business background, meaning my family, I come from a very small town in India. It's Ludhiana in Punjab. And all of my family are business, you know, small business owners or, you know, large business owners, factory or whatever, you know, that's kind of the uh, family background, right? So I did not have any exposure to working in a corporate. Um, engineering was so far away from me. I never wanted to be an engineer. Never. Like I was like, ah, that's just not for me. I studied commerce and very happily I studied commerce and that's all I wanted to do. But I was, I was good in like extracurricular stuff hosting uh, in my call, you know, in, in my school at the time, I used to host all these events and stuff. So the point I'm trying to make is I joined tech. When I came to US, I had, I think all of us, when, when we migrate to another country, there's something or the other. And for me, it was all this New York skyline, you know, <laughs> you know, all that management consulting. I was going to join. I was, I was going to be an investment banker. But why that, right? So later, that was back, you know, me back in years ago, thinking, you know, as a as a new uh, high school pass out when I came to US. Now thinking back, why did I want that, right? It's we all want to do better in life. And I, I wanted to do better in life. I wanted to do better than um, even my parents' generation or my grandfather's generation. You, so there is nothing wrong in wanting to, you know, you took CS background because you want to do better in life financially. There is nothing wrong in that. In fact, you should say, yes, I want a better life. So I'm choosing a better path for myself that is going to eventually lead me to that. Definitely, yeah. I mean, we can yeah. be open about our needs, right? Of course, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And then, uh, and and being in CS, yes, it will lead you to have that better quality of life eventually. It will. I can tell you from my own experience, you know, having worked in tech industry for, you know, uh, for almost a decade now, I think it has changed my uh, my generation's trajectory financially. Definitely. All right. So we have like three more questions in the chat. First one is, uh, Mom, how did you develop your soft skills? Any experience that you uh, have to share? I guess Nazuk has this uh, God gift, you know. She told us uh, currently, you know, that she used to do it in school. But what do you have to say, Nazuk? So the only way to develop is to do it. That's 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 as simple as that. If you want to develop a skill, and especially you know you're around communication, you just have to practice it. Of course, I even in my school, I I think it started back in in my school, and I used to host a lot of these um, 
annual functions and all kinds of functions. I used to host, I used to be an anchor back in the day. And I think my communication started then. But after I graduated here in college, uh, after I started working, I think this is one thing, communication, you know, written and verbal both. I have, um, I've always been very keen on actually improving myself on. So I would highly suggest you guys to read read books around communication. If you if you're getting stuck, read and listen to people who are um, experts and they teach you how to be a better communicator. You guys have a lot of time. Practice, practice, practice. Do it and. And you can practice if you, you know, for written communication, you can practice writing blogs, go ahead and publish a few blogs, you know, that'll be your profile. Uh, eventually, go to medium.com and have a have a profile there and start publishing a few on few topics. If you really want to, you know, start building your portfolio, here's another tip. Pick an app, you can go to Behance or Dribble. I'll, I'll put, put it here. Behance.com. Um, and uh, dribble, it's triple B actually, dribble.com. So these are a couple of websites you can go to and you'll see a lot of projects people have, you know, from design perspective, you know, they're designing, redesigning these apps, pick something, do a critique, put it in a blog, in a, in a nicely formatted way, you know, you take screenshots, don't steal ideas, just give your critique, Talk about your experience, you know, if, if this happens or you don't have to go to the websites, pick an app on your phone, take screenshots, you know, when you just start out, when you just download the app, right? How is their onboarding experience? For example, if you first on your day one, if you installed, uh, let's say, I don't know, Telegram or WhatsApp, what is the experience like? What are the steps you had to do to set up your profile? That That's called onboarding in, in our in our product terminology, it's called onboarding a user. So take that, take the screenshots, talk about your experience, how was your experience like, put it on a, on a blog. It will eventually, you will see that you write 10 blogs, You and when you go back and read your first one, you're gonna see that, oh my God. You know, it, it there, there comes a time you actually go back and you critique your own work and you realize, I have gotten better. So it's, it's as simple as just practicing. All right. So, yes, the next question, I guess we have just two questions left. I um, mean, the time permits it. So Ishani asks, should we complete our master's before getting into jobs or first gain some experience and then choose the preferred line for master's? Which one do you suggest? This is a very, um, it's a very subjective question, actually. And um, there's a few ways to go about it. Actually, there's no right path. For me, what I chose to do at the time, it, it was my, I want to say, my situation, OK? And subjective meaning I studied my undergrad here in the US and uh, in my last year I started to look for internship and I did my master's while I had a full time job. I studied my master's on the side weekends and evenings. But that was because I wanted to keep gaining the real experience and not just fully be in my master's. I took even a couple of courses in master's that allowed me to gain the practical experience. And my university had had that uh, sort of a program where I didn't have to study, study. I could use my practical experience to kind of get credit for the courses. It's, I, I know a couple of people who have, you know, waited and did their masters, finished their MBA or a masters, like a CS masters. Um, they waited and then went, you know, full time working. I think this is a very, very subjective question and there's no right or wrong way to do it. You can 
some people say uh, some some people say that you know an mba is only useful if you've gained you know a few years of experience practical experience your mba will have a lot more value some people say you know once you start working you don't want to go back to learning and going to college again to the classes again and so i unfortunately do not have a straight answer for this you know you go ahead and do this because this is very very subjective and it is also um i'm not quite sure how in india companies perceive this as like if you had an undergrad degree uh i think that's a good something to look look up even maybe i'll i'll look up after this call like do companies um pay you a little less because you have an undergrad versus your masters degree i think that's something to look up for and more uh to do a little bit of research around you know um how how do companies perceive this as definitely definitely yeah. uh the last question for day day uh alok asks what is the growth difference between software engineer and product management so that's a that's a great question that's a great question and i'm going to give you guys a, a small i guess tip around um uh, the titles itself product managers are mostly ics ics is individual contributors they don't they're not really managers and they don't have a team of product managers working for them at least for the first few initial years and it can be at least even for a good 10 years easily 7 8 years 9 years 10 years people sometimes just don't want to have um a team under them you can be a product manager and still be an individual contributor so the growth path for a product manager is like um will not go around title some companies have a title like product manager 1 product manager 2 product manager 3 and then so on so forth some companies have apm associate product manager pm lead pm group pm director and something like that there's a couple of posts on my um instagram actually with the the titles uh around product management now let's the the growth for an engineer is engineers are also ics in their initial years they are they also go from sd1 sd2 sd3 um and then you know into like an engineering management and so the same thing happens on the pm path also you go from an individual contributor for the initial you know 5 10 years of your career and then you transition into a lead pm where you have other pms reporting to you so they are um <clears throat> they both the roles are from the career trajectory pr- perspective they're both on similar paths of being individual contributors first and then into management role like an engineering manager versus like a product pm manager um but the most important part that will lead you to have faster growth is the type of product you work on okay if you work on hot technologies hot technologies something that has demand in the market if you work on those technologies you're going to have a faster growth uh you know title wise and also of course compensation also so that's the the key part here to remember is not just the titles it's actually the type of product you work on and the type of technologies you work on that's that's the main important piece here i hope that helps definitely that definitely helps so i guess we are at the end of this event the end of this qna session uh thank you so much for you know giving your so much time i mean you almost devoted one or one or more hour to this thing thank you so much for coming in guys uh, about and guys have shared the feedback form as well as the insta page link and linkedin profile of nazuk so please do check it do connect with her so 
I'm yes. happy to connect with all of you guys. Happy to. All right, guys. Thank you, Nazo. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care.